everybody! It's time for my final thoughts on the Umbrella Academy. But before we get to that, please remember that this was a paid game found preview. And with that out of the way, here's what I think. Hey everybody, it's time for my final thoughts on the Umbrella Academy, and I've got some strong takeaways for you. The first thing to understand is that this is a very streamlined deck builder. Players have cards that go with their character, and those cards are unique and individualized for that particular character. And so when I say that it's a streamlined deck builder, you're not adding a whole bunch to your deck. You're actually just cycling through the few cards that you're dealt in the beginning of the game along with your 12 player cards. There are cards you can add to your hand, but they don't actually go into your discard pile and those are advantage cards. So the things you're adding are advantages, but advantages are one-offs. And so that deck is really tight, it's very specific, and it's geared for that particular character's strengths. And so that's really cool, I like that. There are characters that work really well together, and I think when you have more players, you actually start to see that you get to do a whole lot of stuff working together, spreading out, helping each other out. There are really great cards in this game that allow you to cycle through your cards pretty fast. And sometimes in deck building games, you just never see a card. You buy a card and you're like, this is so cool. <laughs> and I'm gonna use this card, it's gonna be amazing. And then you never actually get it. Either it's too late in the game for you to cycle it through or your, your shuffling is just really bad. Here, there are so few cards, you see your cards again and again and again, and they're very helpful in a variety of ways. And that leads me into my next thing. The cards are so versatile. So when you play a card, it's going to have a symbol on it. And that symbol can be your power, fight, or wits symbol that allow you to attack hazards. Or you can use it as a text ability. And the text ability is pretty cool too. So cards are multifunctional. You can use a card just to discard to move. And in this game, you are trying to tackle hazards. You're trying to uh, attack and kill the villain of the game. There are a variety of villains that you can choose uh, to play. So each time you play, you're not playing against the same kinds of cards and hazards and villains. But you can play to move to all these different locations. And so the cards are just multifunctional. And there are some fascinating restrictions that keep you from just running around doing all the good things that you want to do. And that's really cool too, because there's got to be something that really prevents you from being as effective as you could be. And that's the hazards. That's the villains. I played with Hazel and Cha-Cha. And that's the feud cards that show up. They really kind of keep you from doing certain things that you would like to do, like discarding cards or moving to places where other players are or playing advantage cards and so forth. So the deck is so interesting. It is unique. And the combinations are kind of endless the way they're shuffled, but also based on the characters that you select for each game. I also think that the way you lose is really, it makes sense. Like everything here is so, so super thematic. If you're overwhelmed by hazards on the board because you're not actually taking care of everything, you're not putting out fires, you lose. So if you have six or more, and there are only 10 locations. If you have six or more out here, you're done. You're done as a team. If a player has a wound in their hand and they can't draw up at the draw phase, that character dies. And if any character dies, you lose the game. If you don't have enough wounds to deal out to everybody, you lose. And there's just this, oh, if you run out of these cards too, that's the last way, right? That's your draw deck. You essentially run out of time. You spent way too much time playing the game and you didn't die in any other way, which I think probably is going to be the way you die the most is not by going through this deck. Um, but you want to get to the save the world card. And when you do that, that triggers the finale. And so this game kind of reminds me of two games. Um, the first game that it reminds me of is Pandemic. So Pandemic is cooperative. You're playing cooperative here. Um, while you don't necessarily have the um, 
the card, right? You're not doing your deck building in pandemic. You're still having cards and you're playing them and you're trying to kind of match and synergize and work with each other to accomplish um, preventing the pandemic from spreading across the world. That's this. Your hazards are spreading out everywhere. Your villains are taking over and you're just trying to keep everything at bay using cards and working cooperatively. The way the deck is stacked in the beginning in uh, five sections that uh, very balanced um, spread out the advantages from the hazards. That is also very pandemic style. And the save the world card goes right in the middle. Uh, in that middle, um, there's like a five deck. So it's that three fifths of the way down, like halfway. That's where that card is going to go. So it really reminds me of that cooperative nature of pandemic, playing the cards and keeping the stuff tamped down, right? Really attacking stuff and keeping it without exploding. Because much like you, you can lose a city and like a location on the map at pandemic, you can have a devastated location. And devastated locations count as hazards and you can't use the thing. There are There's text underneath all these locations or most of them and you wanna be able to use that, but devastation just explodes, it just ruins everything. The other game that this reminds me of is Final Girl in the sense that there is this really cinematic feel to this game. And in Final Girl, you're living in a horror story. And in this one, you're in the Umbrella Academy world, which is a comic, which is a TV show. And I think people are probably familiar with the Umbrella Academy. And so that IP works really well. But it also, again, is so cinematic. And you are playing in this space where you have, I've got to accomplish X, which is take care of the hazards. But you also have these villains that you're taking care of, much like in Final Girl, there's a bad guy who's running around with an axe trying to kill everybody. And in here you've got, in my case, Hazel and Cha-Cha, but you can't really go after the baddie until a certain point. When you're in Final Girl, you're strong enough to really take on the baddie, which takes about half the game. And in this case, you can't actually go after the baddies until you, you get the Save the World card, which means flip the supervillain card, and now you're in the finale, which is the final showdown between the players playing the characters, Space Boy and Rumor, against Hazel and Cha-Cha. So that, to me, just is so exciting. So it works really well. I love the cooperation, and I love the cinematic feel of the game. Now, you have to take into consideration that there's a lot of shuffling and potential combinations and luck um, things that might happen that might just be really hard to deal with. For instance, a meteor is really hard to deal with. Three of these lightning bolts, three power, when maybe your character has one power um, symbol and the other characters doesn't have any, and you don't have any of your uh, advantage cards to give you power, you might actually find that you just lose your hospital. And that's like round one or round two, because if this isn't there, uh, if, if you don't destroy this hazard, that hospital explodes. It gets devastated. And so you just have to know that the cards, the way they're stacked is hopefully trying to even out the amount of advantage cards with hazard cards, but they might just not work sometimes. They might put you in a real pickle and you might find that things are really tense, but that just amps up the theme. It just amps up the excitement and the tension. So yeah, if, you're, if your hospital explodes, whoopsie, <laughs> uh, maybe go save the mansion instead or, you know, do something that is going to get you closer to winning the game, which is defeating Hazel and Cha-Cha. And defeating them is a two-step process. Each villain, you fight once, they get wounded, you fight them again, and they're harder on their wounded side because they're frenzied, right? Anytime someone you know, gets a stabby, um, then, you know, <laughs> they, they get really upset, which, why, they should, of course, um, even if they're doing villainous things. So, I really enjoy the theme. I think the feud cards are interesting, and they create a real problem for the players to work together. Otherwise, I think it'd be a little bit too easy to work together. And I think that the way uh, each round works is simple, streamlined, and the decks are balanced just right to make sure that each character has a unique deck and each player feels like they're really, really helping out the team. So while there is some luck, while there is some chance when it comes to the player deck and how they're shuffled, I think the deck is streamlined and just like 
nice enough that it can't get too out of whack. I think sometimes the cards might. Give all the villains a try. There's Hazel and Cha-Cha. There's the White Violin, um, which uses Vanya. Vanya, we all know Vanya. And then there's the Orchestra of Verdampton. And so you have three totally unique villains that function in really interesting ways that really change up the game and the style and the hazards. And you can always trade out the characters and play someone new next time. All right, thanks for joining me with my final thoughts on the Umbrella Academy, the board game. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.